25 starters as a special dispensation being allowed to start out of the 26 entrance and Alain Prost leads away down to Redgate the conditions are now good enough for us to use the helicopter and let you look down at the circuit as Prost goes into Redgate now he goes to what used to be called Hollywood because it used to be solid trees in those days, no longer, and the viewing is incomparably better, of course, through the Craner curves, enormously spectacular. I hope it brightens up later so that we can see them all the way through to the old hairpin, now up to the second fastest part of the course, underneath, up alongside Starkey's Bridge. They're doing about 170 miles an hour here in race conditions, up to McLean's, the right-hander, which is a 90-mile-an-hour corner, climbing up to the blind Broad, which goes into Coppice, which they're approaching now. And I can see dry patches on the road there, and uh, that may well encourage people to come in very early indeed. A couple of laps of this, and it may well be six conditions it looks quite marginal already so it'll be interesting to see who goes for the very early pit stop but uh, this breeze has dried the track a lot more than uh, one would have expected there is a steady breeze coming across but uh, we've it's looked so damp and overcast now there will be a lot of a lot of brain work chur uh, churning around in those cockpits now all those drivers will be giving it maximum thought about uh, whether they should be whether and when they should be changing onto slick tyres rounding the Melbourne hairpin that's the penultimate corner on the track there is Alain Prost leading the field he'll slow it right down now letting the field bunch up behind him so that he doesn't have to sit too long uh, in gear at the front of the grid. He had a little practice start there, so did Damon. And JJ Leto has done the bright thing. He has put slicks on. He has taken the gamble. He is on slicks. He's in the pit lane. He can afford to drop back for, for a couple of laps because he'll be last anyway while he finds out the conditions. And I think JJ Leto could uh, have a very good race from here, from there. So do I, it's one of my dark horses for victory and what, a, what an incredibly popular and innovative victory it would be as you see Michele Alboreto rounding the left-hander at Goddard when you see, there's the man with the green flag when you see the red it will be from 4 to 7 seconds before the green and the start of the 76 lap European Grand Prix Cross gets away well, so does Hill, so does Schumacher Wendlinger is coming up well, Senna is crowded out and is down to fifth position and Wendlinger is up into third place ahead of Schumacher. Brilliant start by the Austrian driver in the Black Sauber. Prost leads, Hill second, Wendlinger is third and Ayrton Senna is up to fourth position ahead of Schumacher and challenging Wendlinger as they go round the right-hander into the old hairpin. Senna is up to third. And after being crowded at the start, a quite brilliant couple of corners by Ayrton Senna. Tremendous stuff. He muscled his way back into the contention at Redgate. He's going inside Damon Hill. And Senna into second place already. And he's giving it absolutely everything in the wet part of the race. So now, as before, the two great rivals, and that's Andretti. He's done it again on the very first lap. Mario Andretti is out as he was in Brazil, as he almost was in South Africa. Three Grand Prix, and he has only done three full laps. And so out is Wendlinger. So two retirements already. Uh, Michael Andretti and Carl Wendlinger. As and Senna goes through into the lead. He's passed Alain Prost, so the McLaren leads. Prost second, Hill is third. A tremendous gap between the third and fourth cars. Yes, and that must be caused by the Andretti uh, and Wendlinger incident. We would assume that they may, may have had a coming together. We will try and find out. Senna going away, but I expect that Damon Hill will be looking for a way past his team leader, Alain Prost, who doesn't like the wet and won't be in a hurry. Senna, you see, on opposite lock there, out of Redgate, sliding his car. And Senna took to the wetter part of the track to get past people going down this hill here on the first lap to the old hairpin. But uh, 
with the circuit drying out, Senna needs to get a really big lead if he can because the Williams is infinitely superior. And above all, he, Senna wants to have enough lead that he can get his tyres changed and still be in the lead when it all settles because then he'll feel that he may be able to hold off the Williamses because overtaking is so difficult. Now, Michael Andretti, this is the first at replay and uh, that uh, we saw so a tangle uh, between Wendinger and Andretti, two uh, notably, two known hard chargers, but uh, we, don't, we didn't see how it actually developed. That's second and third. And what we haven't had a chance to tell you that is in an astounding fourth position is Rubens Barrichello, the Brazilian driver in the Jordan, and uh, Hill goes round in second position, and Barrichello is up into third place. This is astounding. 20... Fourth position, I'm sorry, I missed out in centre. So Senna leads, Prost second, Hill is in third place, Barrichello is in fourth position, Alessi in the Ferrari is fifth, Schumacher is in sixth position, and there goes Prost with Damon Hill tucked up behind him. Barrichello in fourth position, Alessi fifth, Schumacher sixth, Berger is seventh, Johnny Herbert is eighth, Patrese is ninth, Zanardi is tenth, Derek Warwick is eleventh, and in 12th position is Fabrizio Barbazza, the Italian driver in the Minardi Ford. But Ayrton Senna, at the end of the second lap, had a four-second lead over Alain Prost with the fastest lap so far, 1 minute 27.8. This is an astounding performance by the Brazilian. It's a demonstration, too, of the fact that the horsepower disadvantage that he has... Look at the gap! Yes, and the point is that uh, Senna, Senna is really showing his genius because the Williams is just as much uh, a better car than all the others in the wet as it is in the dry. And the lead that Senna has built up is pure Senna. He is driving uh, with a disadvantage to both Williamses and uh, it's the same inspired stuff that we saw in the Brazilian Grand Prix two weeks ago uh, when the track was wet and when it was damp that Senna uh, really flew and demoralised Damon Hill that we were looking at just then. But uh, just look behind Damon Hill, it's 20 years old Rubens Barrichello. This is only his third Grand Prix. He was the British, oh, there he is. The short, sturdy, very determined and extremely bright Brazilian. And he's ahead of Jean Alesi, he's ahead of Schumacher. There is Berger, there is Johnny Herbert, Ricardo Patrese down in ninth position. Zanardi is in tenth place and Senna is now leading by nearly seven seconds. Yes, and I'm fairly sure that uh, Alain Prost is holding up his teammate Damon Hill and that's Suzuki, spinner of the year. Uh, having yet another spin, he had umpteen spins uh, this weekend through Thursday, Friday and Saturday. He's just uh, adding to what's already a very large score. And I'm quite sure that Damon Hill would uh, be able to give Ayrton Senna more of a chase than the very uh, circumspect Alain Prost, or circumspect in these sort of conditions. But in fact the visibility is fine. And uh, Prost, as Quedge is saying, he doesn't mind slippery tracks, so that's good fun. It's not being able to see now. There's Suzuki in the footwork, and uh, he's just having, having another one. Uh, but uh, we know what it's like, him spinning. We've seen it all weekend. Indeed we have. That's the new uh, footwork car. And here is Ayrton Senna going through to complete the lap and Alain Prost is not yet even in sight. There is Prost behind him in second place. Third position is uh, Damon Hill, Barrichello holding on magnificently. We are on lap five of the 76 lap European Grand Prix. Barrichello, Alessi, Schumacher, Berger who is in seventh position, Johnny Herbert eighth. Coming towards us, Ricardo Patrese in the Benetton night. And uh, there's a bit of a battle for 10th position. It's led by number 24, Barbazza, who is followed in 11th place by Sandro Zanardi in the second of the Lotus Fords. And Senna, as James has said, is demonstrating his, his genius. There is no other word for it at Donington, which is the, the circuit where he first drove a Formula One car in 1983 when he had a test for Williams having become the British Formula 3 champion.
and it's not going to be very long before people come in for tyres. The sun is really shining now and the wind is continuing to blow, so the circuit is drying out rapidly. It's still damp at the start and finish point, but there are many dry patches and they're going to call for slick tyres before much longer. Yes, and... Uh... And that's a shot from David Hills. And back to Ayrton Senna. Now Senna over the line. And the gap, seven seconds, and Alain Prost is now holding Ayrton Senna. And Senna, for sure, will be thinking very, very hard about changing tyres. Probably not quite there yet. You can see the still spray coming off the tyres. And that may well, uh, uh, that means normally it's still a little bit too wet. This is where the surface does hold the water and uh, take a long time to dry, as I said. But uh, I'm sure the McLaren team will be watching JJ Leto very carefully indeed and monitoring his lap times. And the moment his lap times get within about three seconds of Senna's on wets, they think I'm quite sure they'll have Senna in to change the drive because it's going to be Viking. The, uh, the track is now dry enough for Senna's brilliance in the wet to be negated and Prost is now using the uh, benefits of the Williams to hold Senna and this is on board with Ayrton Senna round the Melbourne hairpin and firing it away and coming down to complete the lap didn't go to the pits that time, it's past the pit entrance. I saw the yellow line appearing under his wheels and just for a moment I thought the Senna was diving into the pits to get new tyres, to change from wets to slicks, certainly not the case. He's into lap seven now and he is six and a half seconds ahead of Prost. The gap is starting to come down. Prost has just gone round half a second faster than Senna. Yes, and Senna's wets I think are beginning to uh... Uh, maybe get past their best and get a bit of heat into them on the uh, drying bits of track because his lap times, he has actually slowed down he did the fastest lap of the race on the second race and some people are starting to come in that was one of the Ligiers into the pits it was Martin Brundle on lap 7 and that's an intelligent move, he's come in early, it may still be a bit damp in parts when he goes out, but he'll be very aware of the situation. See the plumes of steam from his tyres with wheel spin as he sprints out, and uh, Martin Brundle was well down the field, but he's going to start to improve now as past Katayama to lap him, goes Ayrton Senna at the hairpin. Is the Brazilian going to come in this time? Well, Cathy Armour has changed onto slicks, and Ayrton Senna may have had a chance to look at Cathy Armour's performance on slicks, because he came in as well as Brundle just a lap before. Brundle's, Brundle's uh, exit from the pits was fairly combative, I thought, but uh, he seemed to get on all right round Redgate. Senna coming up to Michele Alboreto in the Lola Ferrari and on lap 8 he's under 6 seconds ahead of Prost now and Prost for the third lap in succession has gone faster than race leader Ayrton Senna the only McLaren left in the race with Andretti having collided with Wendlinger on the first lap Senna leads Prost who is 1.6 seconds ahead of Damon Hill who is now 7 seconds ahead of Barrichello fourth who is one second ahead of Alesi in fifth position, and in sixth place is Michael Schumacher.